Welcome back, I'm Tedward. McGovern Auto Group has invited me to their Ford store here in Lowell, Massachusetts to drive this 2020 Hennessy Performance Velociraptor 600. Now, I love Ford Raptors because they look tough, they act tough, but the reality is their road manners are fantastic and you can use them every day. It's pretty much impossible to break this and if you live in the city, you can park it anywhere as long as you can find the space because you're never gonna curb a wheel. And in the winter, you just throw it on top of a snowbank. But of course, 450 horsepower was not enough for Hennessy, so they went and did a bunch of improvements on the cooling and airflow on this to get 600 horsepower out of it. And when you buy one of these, you will get a a personalized dyno sheet for your truck. But first, the thing you're gonna notice the most is the scale, the size. This has been lifted three inches as if the Raptor wasn't already beefy enough. Of course, we're still retaining the Fox racing dampers. And then it's also popped up on these 35 inch Toyo tires with 20 inch 10 spoke wheels. It's even more rugged with this bull bar and of course the Velociraptor across the front. And you've got the rigid light bars on the sides and in the center. Of course, we've still got our skid plate under here. You're not gonna break this. And if you did, you really tried. All right, let's hop inside because I think the Raptor's real strength is in its usability. I know it's a big tough, truck on the exterior but the reality is inside it's a comfortable place to be it's incredibly wide and we've got this monster panoramic moon roof that gives us less claustrophobia but more importantly charging stations we've got usb ports you can even plug in your laptop if you were sitting back here working and you'll be comfortable with your heated seats up front very familiar for the raptor but we've also got our Hennessy embroidered headrests, Hennessy nameplate up here. This one is serial number 254, built in Texas, but it feels pretty upscale because we've even got these carbon fiber trim pieces all over the cabin. But you probably didn't come here to talk about trim pieces. Let's drive. That is an upgraded catback exhaust. It sounds pretty vicious. Now, of course, it's never gonna sound as good as a supercharged V8, but it's faster, so do you really care? Here's the thing about Raptors. They are very usable on the street, even though, yeah, they're gonna be advertised so you can go off and jump dunes and, and play in the sand. They can absolutely do that, but in real life applications, it's more practical than that Golf R. <laughs> because not only can I beat them off the line, I can hit every pothole in New England and not break this vehicle. Not only do we have 600 horsepower, got a 10 speed automatic transmission that lets us stay in the power band at all times. It definitely feels softer than the standard Raptor. I think that's probably a product of being uh, three inches taller. And a little extra sidewall. It still handles beautifully. I love the ergonomics of the Raptor cabin because we still have buttons. We haven't gone to touch everything, so cheers to Ford on that. But probably my favorite part of the truck is this little toggle panel up here because I've got, and I won't turn them on because it's probably illegal for me to do that on the road, but I've got my light bars. Oops, I guess I just did it. I've got my light bars up here so I can actually turn my light bars on and off with these auxiliary buttons. And then you can, you can set these up however you'd like. So if you wanted to put more light bars on the rear or on the sides, let's say you go hunting, let's say you're planning on doing some off-roading where it goes terribly wrong and you're going to need lights, or maybe you're into the cannonball spirit and you want some night vision cameras. I mean, to be honest, you could do some serious cannonballing in a truck like this because you throw a ton of fuel in that bed. I'm not recommending you do this, but you could. At 75 miles an hour, I am fully aware that I am on 35 inch all-terrain tires, but 
they're not making that much noise. The cabin's well insulated, so this is certainly still something you could go and cruise around in. I think what I noticed the most is just how stiff those tires are. So although I'm absorbing all those big bumps and obviously any kind of pothole or frost heave on a New England road is not going to upset this Velociraptor, the tires are still relatively stiff. And that translates into just a little bit of vibration. hear those blow off valves man this thing sounds fantastic it's nice when they don't try to hide the turbos in a turbo engine you want to hear all of the things now we're in something that's about 5,000 pounds you're gonna want brakes to bring it down and that's another thing that Ford did well with the Raptor this one has the stock brakes but you can get a big brake upgrade when you're in these trucks you look out into fields like that and you just think oh I could I could tackle that no private property we're not going to do it also this is dealer inventory so I need to be a little bit careful for someone like me who typically drives sports cars and prefers sports cars over giant trucks I really like the Raptor because the Raptor seems to be designed with drivers in mind and that's not something you always come by in the truck world <laughs> and I love that you can chuck this thing into a corner it behaves you know, if you know how to drive a car, if you've got good car control, these are just a joy to play with. Pink police cruiser. All right, I dig it. I think the paradox of the Raptor is that it looks intimidating, it looks tricky, it looks too big, but then you drive it and it's fine. I mean, this is as wide as an H1 Hummer. And I'll tell you, I've driven H1 Hummers. They they are scary. You, you, you're not totally certain where the car is. Somehow, these Raptors allow you to just place them on the road exactly where you want them and you're never concerned about like, oh, am I clipping my mirror on this light pole? It, you know, I just pulled this out of a really tight spot actually up at the dealership and I had to do like a 10 point turn to get it out and I didn't ask them to move another car because I was confident in where the car was. In addition to that, I've got, I guess I can't do it when I'm going this fast, but I've got cameras front and rear so I can see everything on this vehicle and I'm never concerned whether or not I'm going to make it. But when you are driving something of this size and with a big steel push bar up front, you should be uh, responsible because if you do hit something, you might have not felt it. So, you know, don't be the guy who hits a Porsche in a parking lot and drives away because he doesn't know it. <laughs> Fun story that happened to me, but I wasn't, uh, I was on the receiving end. There's also something to be said for being fun to drive. I mean, look, you, you can't be just going and ripping zero to 60s and standing on the brakes and jumping this thing all, all over the place, which, I mean, I guess you could, but I mean, is that really your daily drive? Probably not. And when you're just kind of cruising around at low speeds, this still is entertaining. I still have fun driving it. And in a world where everything is just getting more and more separated from the driver, numb, boring, it's nice to have a connection to your vehicle. And to be able to have something that's as capable off-road as this, but also normal to drive on regular roads, that, that's big. I mean, think about it. If you've ever driven an old Jeep Wrangler on 35-inch tires, you go out and it's got the death wobble on the highway, good luck accelerating to 80 miles an hour. It feels like a death trap. It's cool that you can get into something like this that's just as capable, all right, maybe it's not a rock crawler, but it's capable off-road and you can go fast off-road because of the suspension. And then you can also hop in and drop the kids off at school or drive three, four hours north to Vermont to go skiing. I've got heated and cooled seats. I'm a happy camper. This is a great place for somebody who, who, who really drives. Let's take a look at this turning radius. Mm, probably just gonna tear these people's lawn up. Toyos, they make a bit of noise, which means you know when they're about to let go. Look at that. We can we could slam into railroad tracks and, and never flinch. That's the beauty of Raptors in this Velociraptor, is that there's pretty much nothing in the road that's going to impact the truck in a catastrophic way. Let's see what she does, even with a three-inch lift and 35-inch tires.
really goes to show you what a good suspension can do for a vehicle. But every lesson you've ever learned about weight transfer starts to come into play when you've got something with this much squat and dive. I mean, it's certainly manageable, but you've gotta be aware that this body is going to move around on you when you're on that throttle, in a corner, or on the brakes. scroll through these menus you've got manifold charge temp vacuum boost transmission temperature air fuel ratio cylinder head temp engine oil temp oil pressure I mean they're really allowing you to check everything that's going on with the vitals of this machine that says a lot because that means that they're expecting you to go and push it hard enough that you might overstep those boundaries and hopefully with all the improved cooling of this from uh, Hennessy you won't really have a chance to. But hey, I mean, if you're out in the desert, it's 115 degrees out and you're jumping this thing around the dunes, I don't know what happens to those types of temperatures. I'm sure they go up and I'm sure you'd wanna know, got a tunnel, it must be done. Thank you so much to the McGovern Auto Group and McGovern Ford here in Lowell, Mass for letting me check this thing out. I, I've never even seen one, let alone drive one. So cool to experience the Velociraptor 600 firsthand. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. And I'll see you in the next one.